Are you looking to build a new PC but you're not quite sure which CPU to purchase? Well I'll help you sort through the confusion and show you how I pick out a CPU for any PC build that I'm doing. To choose the right CPU for your project, what you need to ask yourself first is what do you want to use this computer for? Now I've broken things down into three different categories or use cases, but keep in mind there could be more. So the first category is gaming. For gaming, I would recommend a minimum of four cores. A four core processor will actually get you through most of the AAA titles on lower to medium settings, but also get you through all the eSports titles with ease. Now, if you have additional budget to use for your gaming PC, I would recommend going with a six core and preferably a six core 12 thread CPU. A six core 12 thread CPU is more than enough to play AAA games at high settings, of course, depending on which graphics card you pair with it. Now, I wouldn't recommend necessarily going to an eight core CPU. However, if you have the budget, it certainly will not hurt. Anything over an eight core CPU for gaming really isn't going to net you much more performance for the price that you'll spend on the processor. Now, the second category that I have is streaming and content creation. And for this category, I'm really thinking of people that are wanting to stream on either Twitch or YouTube, and also maybe create videos from that with relatively simple timelines. So not a lot of advanced video editing. For that use case, I would recommend an eight core CPU and certainly an eight core 16 thread CPU so that you have hyper threading to enable you to take advantage of some of the more challenging workloads. So the third category I would call a creator. So in this instance, you're doing a lot of maybe four or 8K video editing and you're using multiple timelines, a lot of effects, things of that nature. Alternatively, you could be doing a lot of CAD drawings or something like that where you're doing 3D rendering, which really uses a lot of processing power. Now for those workloads, I would suggest going with a 10 core CPU. Um, additionally, a 12 core CPU would work as well. And certainly something with hyper threading. Uh, with CAD applications and, and high-end video editing, as many cores as you can fit in, the better. Uh, you could make the use case that you should go for a 16 core uh, CPU, but once again, price and performance, there's kind of a diminishing return at that point. All right, so for those of you looking that aren't doing gaming or not gonna be a creator, things of that nature, but you have another use case that you wanna use your PC for, but you wanna build it yourself, then what I'd recommend is going to Google and just typing in whatever application plus system requirements to do a search and you should get the system requirements for that particular application. For instance, if you were just gonna put Google Chrome on a computer, you could put Chrome system requirements and it'll tell you what kind of processor you need to run Chrome. If you're just doing Chrome or an operating system, something like that, you don't really need a lot of processing power, but maybe you're doing something like an accounting application, you might need a little bit more. And if you're looking for a recommendation on a CPU, I will have some links to some of the CPUs that I like to use for these different types of builds, and I'll put them in the description below. Keep in mind they're Amazon affiliate links, so if you purchase them from there, that does help out the channel as I will get a little bit of the kickback, but it costs no additional money to you. All right, so now that you know what kind of CPU that you're looking for, we need to also know what your budget is. Now we wanna go and get the most amount of CPU that we can for your budget, However, keep in mind, you've got other components you have to purchase as well. And if you'd like to know how I break down my purchasing or my budget for my PC, you can check out this video right here. So the TLDR version of that video is you're gonna spend about 35% of your budget on your core components. That would be your CPU, your motherboard, and your RAM. Within there, I would say you can spend about half, give or take, doesn't have to be perfect, on your CPU. All right, and now that you have what you need and what your budget is, we can now move on to the third thing, which is, do you wanna overclock? So are you somebody that wants to get the absolute most amount of performance out of your system as you possibly can? Well, in that case, if you're gonna go with Intel, you're going to need a K SKU. So what I mean by K SKU is an i9-9900K, for example. The K SKUs inside of Intel designate which CPUs are actually able to be overclocked. Now keep in mind, if you go with the K series processor, You'll also need a Z-series or Z-series, if you're not in the United States, motherboard to pair with it as that gives you overclocking support. Now on the AMD side, if you wanna go with the Ryzen processor, all of those chips pretty much can be overclocked as long as you have an overclocking supported motherboard, which is essentially anything outside of the A320 motherboards. And now that we know the requirements, let's hop over to Newegg and I'll show you how I shop for a processor. Okay, so we popped over to Newegg.com and I'm gonna show you how I pick a processor. Now for this example, we're just gonna use a six core gaming processor for under 200 bucks. So we're gonna use that as our budget and what we're looking for. Um, plug in whatever parameters you have, but we're gonna need something to start with so we can start looking for a processor. So here's what we're gonna do. 
So when we get to Newegg.com, we're going to go over to components and then CPUs and processors and then desktop processors. So this will get you to the actual processor page itself. Um, what we're going to do here though is we're going to actually look and we're going to go down the side here and I'm going to show you how to filter down what you need so that you can get a couple of ideas of what you're looking for and what values may be out there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to skip this particular Intel and AMD. Don't pick a processor based off a of brand. Don't pick a processor based off a of socket unless you're doing an upgrade, which is a completely different story. Um, but what we want to do here is since I said my uh, I'm looking for a gaming computer or a gaming uh, CPU, I'm going to go ahead and do six core, but I'm also going to do an eight core because remember what I said, six core uh, processor is just fine for gaming. If you wanted to go to eight, if you're being competitive, that would be fine too. So we're going to click those. I'm going to leave in stock. I'm not going to check this because we're not shopping off a of new egg so new egg is a great site you can get things off them very cheaply but also there are other deals to be had out there what new egg has for their website that no one else does is a search ability their searching is probably the best website uh, for computer components that i know of that includes amazon micro center any other site that i can think of um, new egg has them beat so we're going to do six core and eight core and right now i'm going to actually go in here and i remember i said we have a 200 dollars budget I'm actually gonna set my budget to $250 for the max. And the reason why is sometimes you will find components cheaper, like especially if you have a micro center near you, but normally the gap isn't more than 50 bucks. If you have a hard limit at $200, that's fine, but don't limit yourself inside of your search to this because remember, you're getting ideas, you can always purchase that somewhere else. All right, so we're gonna hit apply, and now we're gonna get down to you know processors that we can deal with here. Um, there's still, let's see here, uh, one of three uh, pages. So there's still a lot of stuff on here. So what I like to do is I'm gonna come into these uh, processors here and I'm gonna do the latest generation first. So I'm going to here and we'll do uh, Core i7. Maybe we're not gonna look at an i7 because I don't really see the latest generation here, uh, which is 10th gen by the way. So, but for these i5s, let's do a 9th and 10th gen. And for the FX series, I'm actually gonna skip those all together because Ryzen is the current generation. So now I'm gonna hit apply again, and we're gonna get filtered down to even more results here. So taking a look here, we've got some options. So we got the Ryzen 5 3600, it's a great chip, it's six core, it's 12 threads. Um, you've got the 9400, another good processor, it's six core, I don't think this one's actually hyper-threaded, uh, 9600K, so we still got quite a bit of options to choose here. So what I think we should do is let's go over here and we can actually scroll down and we can go to operating frequency. So let's do three gigahertz and higher. All right, and so now we've got this limited down uh, to you know a, a rather you know workable handful of, of processors here. So looking at this, we've got the 3600, we've got the 9600K. Remember, K can be overclocked. Any of the Ryzen chips can be overclocked. Uh, but if you do choose the 9600K or any kind of K SKU, you are gonna need a Z series motherboard. And for something sub $200, you probably got another $150. It's gonna be really hard to get that in RAM for you know what I roughly would spend as far as balancing out a system. But it's your computer, do what you want with it. So with all that said here, what we can do is we can actually compare and let's say we're gonna take this 3600, um, 3600 XT, uh, you could go that way. I'm gonna stay away from that, but let's go ahead and pick this 9500 because I think that's a good value as well. Um, and just for giggles, let's go ahead and throw in this 9600K because you can't overclock it. Um, everything else is really close to $250. Uh, certainly you can you know, go over your budget over the $200 that we said here. Um, but those are all right around $200. This one's a little bit more 215, but you may be able to find it on Amazon or something like that. And I'll have uh, links to processors that I found on Amazon that were pretty good deals um, in the description below. Once again, they're affiliate links. So we're gonna go ahead and hit compare. And it'll put these side by side for you. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off recommendations. I hate that they do it, but they do, it's fine. Um, and so now you can kind of go down and say, okay, well, what are we looking at here? It'll give you the sockets and everything. And here it'll give you your cores and your threads. So if you go one of the Intel options, you are gonna lose hyper-threading. Um, however, if you go with this 9600K, it does run at a higher frequency than the 3600, if that's something that's important to you. 
Um, and you can kind of go down and compare the specs. Those are the ones that I normally look at. The other thing that I would look at, and let's see if it's actually on here. Uh, I'm not seeing it on here, but the other thing that I would look at when choosing a processor is actually looking at the memory support. So what speed up oh, here it is right here, actually. So as you can see here, the Intel chips only support 2666. The Ryzen chip is going to want 3200 megahertz speed. So that's something if you if you've got a memory kit already that you may be using or if you've already purchased your, your RAM and it's 3200, you can use it with these Intels, but it is going to slow it down to 2666 because that's what's supported on here. All right, so now that you narrowed down to one or two choices, you can now go into YouTube and maybe look at Gamers Nexus or Hardware Unbox or any of the really fantastic channels that will benchmark these processors for you. You should always do an independent review of any PC component that you're purchasing to make sure it's gonna fit your use case and make sure that it performs the way the manufacturer says it will. Once you've done the reviews, now it's time to go shopping. Like I said, I'll have Amazon affiliate links down in the description box below so you can check those out. Once again, they do help me out, so I do appreciate you shopping from there. Um, other than that, make sure that you like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff on the video. And as always, I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you in the next video.